G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. We're in the season where we're reflecting on our pre-season predictions made at the start of the year. So on the channel already, I've done a full reaction to the ladder prediction that I put out probably in March of 2024. In today's video, I thought I'd react to a different video that I did with Druzy with different predictions. So it's not a ladder prediction. We simply shot 10 quick fire questions at each other as predictions for season 2024. And in today's video, I'm gonna see how they went. There's some niche questions in here. And um, I must say it's worth noting that this video was made in January of 2024. So it was the peak of the off season. In some cases, I changed my mind by the time I did my ladder prediction. So if you're gonna slaughter me for anything, slaughter me on the ladder prediction. There's enough howlers in there. And this video also has some howlers as well from both of us. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll a clip from that original video, and then I'm going to, well, provide the answer and respond as to how well I did. Will Jai Amos kick more or less than the 41 goals he kicked this year in 2024. So will Jai Amos improve is the question. Well, that's exactly how many goals he kicked. So it's just specifically, will he kick more goals than that in 24? Yes, he will. That's a good rate. I reckon he, he can kick two goals a game. He's capable of a bag of three or four as well. He's the best forward we've had since Pav. Jai Amos kicks more than 41. All right, so Druzy had the first question and it was around Jai Amos kicking more goals in 2024 than he did in 2023. Now, I think Druzy took the straight down the line of will Jai Amos improve? But the question really was just, will he kick more goals? Now, the answer is that he did not kick more goals in season 2024. He kicked 36 goals from 22 games, which is still a pretty solid season. It also doesn't mean he didn't improve. I think the advent of Josh Tracy coming in and being the player that he was in 2024, I remember that derby where he killed us in about five minutes, might have taken some goals from Amos, but Drew's technically got this wrong, so it's 0-0 to start. Will Harley Reid finish top three in the Eagles' best and fairest? Ooh. Upon first reaction to that, I kind of almost found it offensive. But <laughs> to be honest, I actually think there's actually a little bit to that. Um, I think, especially if he plays back, because if you like look at how Harry Sheasel went last year, he won North's best and fairest. With West Coast, you know, there's there's Kelly, there's Allen, uh, maybe Duggan who might pip him. Uh, to answer your question, I'm going to say top five, not top three. So my first question was an Eagles-related one. Harley Reid making the top five. I have no doubt that this question came from a bad place with Druzy. And uh, he asked me specifically, will he make the top three in the best and fairest? And I said he'd make top five, but not top three. So that part is wrong. Harley Reid actually finished ninth in the Eagles' best and fairest. At that time, I do remember in January, it was still very unclear in what position was Harley Reid going to play in at West Coast? In the end, he ended up pretty much playing as a midfielder um, for the entire year with a bit up forward. What also happened at West Coast was that a lot of players who presumably finished high in the BNF, like uh, McGovern and Yo, come straight to mind. Uh, they all had better years with injury, which made it harder for Reid to get into that top five. So technically the question was top three, and I said no. So I'm going to give myself a point. Will Sam Walsh finish top three in the Brownlow medal this season? Mm -hmm. That's a tricky one. So, yeah, Sam Walsh, full preseason under his belt. Had a great final series last year. Not quite. I'm going to say, yeah, top six capable, not quite top three. So I was really big on Sam Walsh uh, being a serious brown low chance and slow start to the season. Probably still didn't hit the heights that I expected. Um, but again, probably missed too many games, even in an ideal world, to actually win the medal. Uh, so Drewsy said he's capable of top six. That's a fair call. Um, he didn't get anywhere near that. And he said no. So he is correct on that one. Sam Walsh did not finish the top three in the brown low. Do Gold Coast have their highest ever finish? I'm going to say yes. I don't think I'll bet on them to play finals, but I do think think well the, the highest ever finish is 12th so they just have to beat that and i would probably bet on that happening i think last year bottom four was about end of the year new coach hard week yeah i'll back him in and say they finish higher than 12th so gold cup is finishing higher than 12th and i said yes i thought that they would have some improvement this year i would argue that they still improved quite a bit it was kind of a, the season where a lot of those teams were evenly rated still vying for that bottom half of the eight particularly the, the next glut of teams outside of that race were still evenly rated so they ended up finishing 13th uh, rather than 12th so i did i did get this wrong i have a feeling next year we're going to see a big improvement in the Gold Coast Suns. And I'm very confident at this point in time, they should finish higher than 12th next year, but I got this one wrong. So we have one correct answer each. Now, Drew, there's been a lot of talk about Melbourne's like off-field stuff this off-season. Uh, talk about Clayton Oliver, culture, etc. Joel Smith. Uh, I want to know, everyone else is talking shit about them at the moment. Do you think the D's finish in the top four next year? I back the D's to finish top four. They've just come into bad form at the worst time. Like last two seasons, real bad finals performances. But 
I reckon they've underperformed. I reckon they will achieve more this year. I reckon they play in a prelim, finish top four. Okay, so Drewsy really backed in the Melbourne Footy Club. He always has been a little bit of a Demons fanboy. He's a closeted Demons fan, I reckon. Um, but yeah, he backed them in to finish top four, which is not an unreasonable prediction by any stretch. And they ended up finishing fifth last. The wheels kind of came off towards the back end of that season. And, and some of the form they showed was horrendous, um, particularly once Petrarca went down. But it, it wasn't great even with him in the team. So uh, yeah, he backed him in for top four. And you got this one wrong. Will this be Luke Beveridge's last season at the Bulldogs? This is juicy. This is juicy. I'm going to say yes. Because I don't know what it would take to avoid. Probably top six. And I probably wouldn't bet on the doggies making the top six. But every time I don't bet on them to do well, they do well. So, oh, look, if you're pushing me to guess, I'll say yeah. I reckon there's going to be a new coach this time next year. Oh, yeah. So, Luke Beveridge, this is a gross prediction to look back on. Um, I said they needed, if they finished top six... He'll survive. I then said, I don't think they'll finish top six and therefore he won't survive. Probably just completely off the mark here. Um, was I even correct in thinking top six was the threshold for Beveridge to keep his job? Probably not. They could have finished a little bit lower and he might have kept his job anyway. So that part was wrong. Um, I doubled down on them not finishing top six, which they eventually did. They finished in the top six and they lost their first final. I did predict them to finish eighth. So that wouldn't make sense. I'd imagine if the Bulldogs had finished eighth, I'm sure Beveridge would have kept this job. Um, that being said, when I did that ladder prediction, it was about two months after this video. So either way, I got that wrong. Luke Beveridge is still very much the coach of the Western Bulldogs. Let's talk about the Adelaide Crows. Probably should have made the finals this year if not for a controversial goal review or non... Uh, no, it was a, a goal review gone wrong, as it were. Uh, I want to know, do you think the Crows will play finals in 2024? I reckon they do. I love the footy that the Crows play. It's exciting. It's physical. I reckon the Crows have what it takes to make the top eight this year. Yeah, so I remember the optimism around the Adelaide Crows uh, towards the end of last year. It really felt like it should have made the finals. And I have a video that should be out by now uh, detailing how the ladder might have looked in 2023 had all the close games had their results reversed and Adelaide would have been much higher. So there was plenty of reason to think Adelaide were going to be a good team this year. Drew's just said that it would make the eight. I also predict them, the, I think, sixth in my ladder prediction. So we both got that one horrendously wrong. However, it's Drew's question. So the score is still one all. Which team from last year's top four is most likely to slip out of the top four? Who's stinking it up this year? I'm not going to bet against Collingwood or Brisbane. I think they're well poised. Um, Collingwood could slip from first, but not all the way out of the four. Brisbane, I'm not going to bet against them. And then who we got? We got the D's and Port. Uh, probably the D's are the more likely of the two. I don't know if that's controversial. And I'm not just trying to buy into off-field uh, off you know, talk. But I think Melbourne's list is arguably one of the best in the comp. But I think Port's on an upward trajectory with like the young talent they've got. So I'm going to say the D's are more likely to slip out of the four. This one is a little bit hard to uh, to ascertain whether I got this right. Most likely to slip out of the top four. My answer was Melbourne. Interestingly, I do note that I said that the Pies won't slip outside of the top four. And then two months later when I did my ladder prediction, I had them fifth. And in the end, they missed the eight altogether. So... I said Melbourne. Collingwood would have also been a correct answer here. Uh, so there was multiple correct answers. Is it fair to give myself a point? Probably not, but this is all just a made-up game anyway. So I'm going to say I've got a second one correct, and Drewsy has one. Drews, I want to know your thoughts on Jeremy Cameron. Will he or will he not be an All-Australian in 2024? He wasn't All-Australian in 23. Jeremy Cameron, I think, is like the most exciting player in the competition to watch when he's on. If Jeremy Cameron mm. plays 20 games this season... Yes, he finishes All-Australian. This one is a great prediction from Drewsy to give him credit. Uh, he said if Jeremy Cameron plays 20 games, he will make the All-Australian team. Coming off the back of a year where uh, Geelong had fallen, obviously, out of finals, Jeremy Cameron wasn't All-Australian that year. I think he missed a lot of footy, but still played well. But it would have been a very easy prediction to say, nah, Jeremy Cameron won't be All-Australian. But Drewsy backed him in, and he was All-Australian after playing 24 games this season. So, got to give Drew's credit for that. That's a pretty good prediction in the context of this video. But out of all the other teams that didn't finish in the top four, who is most likely to jump into the top four and get that double chance? This is actually really juicy. So, the three that come to mind are Carlton and GWS, first of all, made prelims and weren't far off the grand final. They both finished fifth and seventh. And then the Swans also finished eighth. And I think all three of those are capable of playing top four footy in 2024. Who's the most likely? Ah, rats. This is <laughs> tough. I have to pick one of those three. That's how it works, buddy. Yeah. I will say the Swans. I don't know why. I'm just feeling that right now. The Swans probably fill me with the most confidence. Carlton probably have the most top-end potential. 
but also probably the most likely to not finish top four. Yeah. If that makes yeah. any sense. No, whatsoever. that that makes perfect sense. They're, they're the most likely to bottle top four. Who jumps into the top four is also another tricky one to assess because um, I think there were multiple teams. So Sydney did it and that was the one I said. Um, so I got that right. Obviously they finished eighth last year. So to take out the minor premiership, that is actually a pretty good call by me. Uh, GWS also made it into the top four. That's uh, on their final ladder. Obviously, they went out in straight sets and technically made a prelim the year before, but they still count. And we both sort of agree that Carton was the most likely to bottle top four. And to be fair, that is exactly what happened. So uh, I think I was correct on this one. I'll give myself another point. Three, two. Who kicks more goals this year, Nick Larkey or Oscar Allen? Nick Larkey. Next. <laughs> Yeah, and to be honest, the more I think about it, like Larky kicked like 18 more goals than Allen this year, so I don't really know why. But I do think those are like an interesting comparison, both like the best key forwards, elite key forwards in my opinion, in the two most terrible sides of the comp. But I think that Allen has a chance, but yeah, Larky's the safe bet. Who kicks more goals? Nick Larkey or Oscar Allen? I think you can tell in that video, by the end of the question, I was questioning, like, is that really a good question? Larkey kicked 18 more goals than Allen this year. As it would happen, um, Allen only played the 11 games, so we'll never truly know. Larkey kicked 46 from 23, Allen kicked 20 from 11, and um, Larkey's got more goals per game. So, again, it was probably a silly question. Drewzy got this correct by saying Larkey. It probably would have been Larkey either way. However, based on that rate, it would have been somewhat close, so maybe it wasn't terrible. Do Geelong re-enter the top eight or do we see them miss finals for a consecutive year? Have we seen them miss finals for a consecutive year like in the last two decades? Uh, good question. I've literally just done a Geelong video. So no, not for a little while. So 15 they missed and they missed in 2006. And I reckon they might have missed like oh, probably like 02, 03. So probably in the last two decades is bang on Drews. Um, I'm going to probably bet against them making the eight. I think I, I do know they have injury issues last year and in particular in their midfield where I think they were weak. Um, they could make the eight. They certainly won't make the top four in my opinion. I'm willing to be ballsy on that one. Um, finals chance, but I'll probably 50-50 bet against it. Oh man, this is a bad one. This is a bad one. I, where did I put Geelong? I think I put them 11th on my actual ladder prediction and I said they won't make top eight. And I said, certainly not top four. And they finished third in the home and away season, getting all the way to a home prelim. And honestly, 10 points off, not only making the grand final, but probably would have won the grand final had they made it. Uh, and when they played Sydney in the MCG, if that had happened. So shock and call. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm so done writing off Geelong. I didn't even think I was writing them off as hard as other people, but I still... I didn't put them in my eight, and uh, that's definitely not going to happen next year. As a bit of a preview, I'm not going to have Geelong outside my finals when I do my ladder prediction next year. Druzy, will Bailey Smith still be at the Western Bulldogs by the end of the trade period? I back Bailey Smith to stay at the Bulldogs, although I would wow. prefer him to be at a bigger club playing on the MCG, to be honest, because he's an absolute superstar. Yeah. Like Watching him play in person, so good. Uh, not just because he's an attractive man. I'm straight. Bailey Smith and Geelong. So technically, we don't have the answer fully locked in. However, Bailey Smith at this current point in time has requested a trade to the Cats. So I think it's almost certainly going to happen. Um, I suppose there's a chance that it, the trade doesn't happen, but even then he's out of contract. So what happens then? Pre-season draft? Probably not. I'd say a deal gets done. I think it's fair to suggest that when Drewsy said he'd back him in to stay at the Bulldogs, that is cor incorrect. So we're three correct predictions each who finishes higher this year st kilda or essendon st kilda no nah, essendon just don't excite me eh? like even zach merrick came out at the end of the season was just like that was just like you know we gave up sort of thing like that was just a classic essendon performance and when like your best players saying that sort of speaks volumes i reckon yeah ross lyon he builds i the reason i kind of angle that one out here is the saints are typically one that people like to underrate from the outside or, or just kind of write off mm. and Essendon did also recruit four players in the trade period so there was a bit of hype so I wanted your opinion but I also do agree I think the St Kilda footy club will finish higher I asked Drewsy um, who would finish higher out of St Kilda and Essendon for context St Kilda actually finished sixth at the end of last year and Essendon missed final so this almost might have seen a layup at the time to pick St Kilda over Essendon and that's what we both sort of agreed although it's Drewsy's question um, however we got this wrong Essendon finished one spot higher than St Kilda this year. Do GWS back up another incredible season and finish in finals? Or do you think last year was an outlier? Maybe they exceeded expectations and they slipped? No, I, I, I don't think last season was an outlier. I, I don't know if I'd bet on them, say, being like a real premiership contender. Uh, that one's possible, but not necessarily something I'm confident about. 
but I am very confident that they'll play finals. I think uh, I think they've gotten over that period of like getting used to the new coach. And uh, you look at their midfield, man, it's still stacked with some guns that are still like probably at the back end of their prime. Like they'll be fine. I reckon they're, they'll be good this year. Druzy asked the broad question, did GWS back it up? Um, I, I said yes. Um, it, it's a vague one. It's hard to, to score points for, but I was very optimistic on them. And then further to that, uh, a little while later, I predicted them as my eventual premiership team this year. So vague question, but I think the fact they made the top four means they backed up the previous year when they made it to a prelim. So again, I'll give myself arbitrarily a point. Sucked in, Druzy. You suck at this game. Druzy, I want to know, do you think the Hawthorne Football Club, who finished third last last year but showed some good form, do they climb out of the bottom four this year? Yeah, I rate the Hawks. Let's start that again. No, no. Yeah, I rate the Hawks. I reckon they climb out of the uh, the bottom four. Big fan of what Sam Mitchell's doing there. Has some really good additions over the offseason as well. Like, that forward line is looking a lot more healthy. Yeah, the Hawks. The Hawks have a good season this year. Yeah, it, it did feel like they didn't seem like a bottom three side. Um, they finished below Gold Coast, um, distantly ahead of the bottom two, but it didn't feel like they were the third worst team to comp, at least in my impression. Do Hawthorne jump out of the bottom four? This is Drewsy's question. He said yes. This is a good call. Obviously, it was a little bit open-ended as to how far they were going to jump out of the bottom four, but that was simply what the question was. We both noted that they were you know, better than the bottom two teams and better than third place or third last place on the ladder would suggest. I don't think I would have ever predicted them to have the season that they did. Drewsy noted their forward line, um, which they obviously recruited heavily for last offseason. So, correct. Points to Drewsy. Who is the All-Australian Rockman? So, English won it this year. Um, and some other contenders would be Rowan Marshall and I think Sean Darcy probably not far behind that. Uh... <laughs> I'm going to go with Max Gorn, the player that I didn't mention at all. I think if he stays fit, he's, I think he's still the best player. He's the best of the lot. Uh, I hope he does. Oh, Australian Ruck is like the one that I can probably hang my hat on in this video because that one can be tricky. Uh, but I said Gorn after going through a number of different options. Um, Tim English had won it the previous year. I backed Gorn in to have a good year. This is a good prediction, to be honest. So 4-5, Jesse's way. Druzy, who will be Fremantle's best and fairest this year? Oh. It was Sarong last year, and I reckon the year before that it was Brayshaw. I'm going to go with Hayden Young. He uh, really built into the second half of last season. Once he got into the midfield, it was like, oh my God, this kid can properly play. Like, he's played the first part of his career off half back. Getting him on ball more, using his skill, is, is a class addition to that midfield. I'm going to go Hayden Young. Drewsy's last question is being asked about Fremantle's best and fairest. Now, Hayden Young is a pretty good prediction. He did have a great season, transitioned to the midfield this year, and um, you know probably exceeded my expectations. One of the most important players, and one of the high, I think he was the number two rated player towards the back end of the year on that particular stretch of form. So good prediction. However, Caleb Sarong, back-to-back best and fairest for Fremantle and an All-Australian season. So it's technically wrong. And by technically, I mean just in every sense of the word, it's wrong. Top three in your Brownlow medal. I'm feeling Sam Walsh. To be honest, I think he wins. I'll say Tom Green second from GWS, very high volume player, just going to continually improve. And then I'll, I'll, I think I've bet on Bond like every year yeah. for the last like six, and it's never worked for me. So I'm going to have him third. Uh, but there's a lot of other contenders in there, but if you want me to pick the top three, those are the three. Oh, top three in the Brownlow is a tough one for me to finish on. Um, this is always going to be super tough. I went Walsh, Green, and Bont and Pelly. So I was absolutely nowhere near it. I think Bont was probably the closest because uh, I think he finished fourth on the actual count, um, but I didn't mention Dacos. Now, in the pinned comment of that video, I wrote, sorry, I forgot Dacos, add him into my top three, but you got to give that zero points. Cripps, Dacos, and Zach Butters were the top three in this year's Brownlow medal. So, yeah, donuts. But by the end of that, it's 5-4 Jesse's way. So, I win the inaugural Virgin Cup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to think of a better name for it. But, uh, oh my God, I made a mistake. There was one more prediction here that I almost forgot. Well, let's let's watch this clip. This one's a no-brainer for me, but will Frio win both derbies by a combined margin of 150 points? No chance. Ah. Absolutely no chance. They didn't even do that this year, and they won one of them by 100. Yeah, slow start to the year, mate. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah, Drewsy, Drewsy thought uh, Fremantle were going to win by... 150 combined points. Well, I just looked it up, and according to my statistics, West Coast won the first derby by 37, and Fremantle won the second derby by 35. So the cumulative margin there is a two-point win to West Coast. So 
Druzy can suck on these. Ah, oh, so good. Just reflecting on that. I remember the week before, I think uh, Fremantle had just lost to Port Adelaide and I was watching Druzy's live stream to watch his tears. And I remember him saying, God, I can't wait to belt West Coast next week. Well, <laughs> oh, that was a fun derby. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.